Well, traditionally, progressive MS is defined as a gradual decline without flare-ups or exacerbations. Uh, we now know that there are subclinical exacerbations and flare-ups that go on in many patients who are deteriorating uh, just slowly. And these uh, may not be in as eloquent areas of brain as one would see, and so you don't necessarily have a, a, a clinical picture with this, but there is damage still going on in the brain. And uh, I think a lot of these patients have what we call, I call, uh, uh, incremental deterioration associated uh, with uh, subclinical exacerbations. Of the, and, and I think those patients are probably are, are treatable and should be treated. And I think it's very important to treat patients early in the disease to prevent them from getting to progressive MS. One doesn't want to wait till <clears throat> there's so much damage to the brain uh, that you're in end-stage uh, kind of brain function. You're not going to improve. So a very critical thing is to be treated early to prevent this. And I think we now have drugs that uh, can do that. And because we have nine drugs now, I think we have better and better opportunities uh, to study and tr treat patients with progressive MS using longer studies than we would just the two years, <clears throat> and by using drugs that, uh, particularly if there's enhancing lesions in the brain, uh, those patients may respond as well. Now that we have a better understanding of the disease mechanisms of progressive MS, we know that new therapies are needed. And these therapies may target things like mitochondrial function, uh, astrocyte and microglial uh, function as well. There are currently a number of new therapies which are being tested for progressive forms of MS, and these include some of the uh, medicines which are used for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, including fingolimod, as well as natalizumab, uh, otherwise known as uh, Gelenia and Tysabri, as well as a few other treatments in smaller studies. Um, in terms of, uh, of phase two studies, um, there is a treatment called Ibutilast, which is being tested through an NIH-funded study. And this might uh, target monocytes and possibly microglia and might hold promise for some progressive MS patients. The most promising approach to me right now is that attacking progressive MS has become an international focus. There is an international alliance of MS societies, of many MS societies around the world that have joined forces together and have identified five areas of unmet need in progressive MS. It includes animal models or preclinical models, phase three outcome metrics, repurposing existing drugs to identify if they might be helpful in progressive MS, and rehab issues. The fifth and we are trying to address that here at the Cleveland Clinic is a phase two outcome metric. What can be done in a short proof of concept trial to identify a potentially promising drug? And we have a trial that we have, uh, are, are helping to lead, the SPRINT MS trial, that is looking to uh, identify not just whether a therapy is helpful, but it's also comparing five outcome metrics five imaging metrics and putting them side by side in all of the patients and all of the centers to figure out which metric is the best. So not only is it looking to, to catch a fish, if you will, but it's also trying to figure out the best way to fish, the best way to identify the pr most promising progressive MS therapies.